excitement that is in this space right now. Uh, before we get started, let's give it up for the jazz band for the introduction. Yeah. Yeah. So, I want to believe everyone on campus knows who I am, but for those who do not, and those who don't remember, my name is Dr. Waters, I'm the director of DEI here in Bovis. I'd like to take this moment to welcome you to an all-day assembly where we celebrate the life and legacy of a man who tirelessly served his community and most perfectly advocated and stood for equality for all. This man's name is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Dr. King, who have, been celebrating, who have celebrated his 94th birthday this past Sunday, left an indelible mark on this country, but also in other parts of the world. His dream of living in a nation where all people could live in solidarity and not be judged or oppressed by the color of their skin, in some aspects has been realized, but in many aspects still is not reality. With this in mind, we gather here today to pay reverence to his dream and legacy by bringing you a program that shows the beauty of what can happen when, we, when a diverse Buddhist community come together. Dr. Key once said, no work is insignificant all labor that uplifts humanity has dignity and importance and should be undertaken with painstaking excellence. So as you all get ready to enjoy the talents and conviction of your fellow classmates and some of your teachers in the spirit of Dr. King's legacy, be mindful that the mere fact that we can all attend this school together, that his life's work has not been done in vain and that his words are being put into action. So, I now present to you, who will be our Master Ceremonies members from the BSU, who along with other members, will continue to drive us through today's assembly. Maya. Thank you, Dr. Waters, and I would like to thank you all in advance for your undivided attention and respect for everyone who will be participating in today's MLK Assembly. Again, my name is Maya Mathis, and on behalf, on behalf of the Bullis, Bullis, Black Student Media Bullis, we would like to welcome you to our first all-school assembly that we've had in years. We're excited to have um, to each uh, division represented and we will be paying, um, paying homage to Dr. King's life and legacy, where it's either through music, a poem, reflection, or even a dance performance. So with that being said, I would like to introduce to you to the first part of our program, which will feature the students from our lower school and their, with their overarching theme of community. And with that, let's give a round of applause for our lower school. zigzags in the sky. The black dress is beautiful, it's shiny and pretty. I wear it in the summer. A black bow waist is beautiful because if you rub it on your face, it feels good and makes you calm. Oh, black 
and beautiful because we can turn off light and turn on light. beautiful it walks through the night black pens are beautiful because you can write whatever whatever you want the black pen is kind of long our clothes is black and beautiful and it can fly for a long time Black cat is beautiful because it's black. And black is beautiful. Black is beautiful. This is black and beautiful. The black cat is beautiful and the black cat is cozy. Black is beautiful because the black night sky, the stars, and on a rainy night, the lightning shining down onto the earth.
And um, I would like to introduce to you the fourth and fifth graders. So could you please take your places? Yeah. 
speak out What if Langston Hughes didn't write it down What if Josephine Baker didn't dance it out Tell me where we'll be now
Community is a group of people who interact with one another and often share common values, beliefs, or behaviors. Participating and being inside a community bonded by attitudes, values, and goals is an essential ingredient to enjoying a fulfilling life. Being in a good community is very important and comforting because you can support each other, never be alone, and have vital social connections and engagement. The aftermath of nonviolence is the creation of the beloved community. Is a quote spoken by Martin Luther King Jr. His well-known I Have a Dream speech also mainly talks about everybody being equal, everybody being one big supportive community no matter your skin tone, background, ethnic groups, or religions. He was also known for leading nonviolent protests about segregation and equality. Unfortunately, he was shot on April 4th, 1968. It was unfair that he was threatened, got his house bombed, and killed. In the coming days, the world has been working on equality among all nations. So it is very important that we have a diverse, supportive, and kind community. Hi, my name is Jake and I'm from the fifth grade class as well. Activism is the action people take to make their changes in their community. Anyone who wants to make the world a better place and take steps to do so can be an activist. Here at Bullis, we make we work together to create positive change and to make our community a better place. For example, we strive to be our best selves by always doing the right thing, even when someone isn't watching us. We also practice being caring, responsible, and respectful, which helps us be better students and great friends to one another. We are inspired by King's activism and honor him today and every day. We, we want to thank the BSU for having the lower school be part of this assembly. Thank you. As seen on the slide, whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. This is the interrelated structure of reality. Was said during a commencement speech Dr. King gave at Oberlin College during the height of the civil rights movement. At this moment, Dr. King was making note that we're all connected and that we as a community have to do our part to address the societal ills that plague this country and the societies and communities we live in. So, with that being said, and as we all take into account Dr. King's words, the next segment of our all school Martin Luther King Day will feature students from the middle school with the theme of leadership. So, let's give our middle school a round of applause. I'm Wesley Wood today. Mr. Wood is sick and could not make it, so I'm gonna read his speech. So the words are coming from him um, as a Latin teacher here at Bullis. Hello everyone, this is my fourth year here at Bullis, and I'm honored to help represent the middle school at our MLK assembly. In 1947, when he was only 18 years old, Martin Luther King Jr. wrote an article for the Morehouse College School newspaper on the purpose of education. He argued that education must enable one to sift and weigh evidence, to discern the truth from the false, the real from the unreal, and the facts from the fiction. Dr. King lived these words through his leadership throughout his life. How can we as students and educators and members of society continue to uphold them? For me, as a world language teacher, I have always said and believed that learning a language is for everyone. But the longer I taught, the more I began to wonder how true is that statement in the United States. In my experience, I have learned the harsh reality that not everyone has equitable access to language education in this country for a variety of reasons. And sadly, not every language is valued the same way as, say, English is. This past year, I have been working with my partner on a year-long project focusing on neurodiversity in world language classrooms. Simply put, neurodiversity is the wide-ranging spectrum of human minds, and we all have unique differences that should be celebrated. The mission of this project, that we call Casting a Wider Net, is that all students, neurodivergent or neurotypical, deserve fair and equitable access to language education. At the workshops and talks we led, we met with hundreds of educators who also share the same desire, and the project is growing. 
In a different capacity, last year I was part of an advocacy group made up of hundreds of language teachers. Together we met with congressional leaders to advocate for funding to support revitalization of Native American languages and traditions in schools. This bipartisan bill called the Native American Language Research Center Act will allow for a central hub to coordinate these, these efforts across tribes, states, and the nation. Today I am pleased to share that it was just that was just passed by Congress during the winter break and is going to be signed into law by the President. of leadership, to sift and weigh evidence, to discern the truth from the false, the real from the unreal, and the facts from the fiction. Thank you. We will now have three middle school students, two representing sixth grade and one seventh grade, to talk about their roles as leaders in their community. School. I'm Cameron Hendrick, and I'm here today to talk about the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. Being a leader means the person who leads or commands a group, organization, or a country. I think being a leader means to create change effectively and lead people into the right direction. There are many ways to get involved in leadership positions at Bullis, one of which being Mama UN. Model UN is where students represent a specific country and exercise their leadership skills during collaborative conferences with a committee of unified countries where the focus is to make positive change. Model UN teaches participating members how to be a creator of change by formulating solutions for global issues, which is exactly the values of Martin Luther King Jr. taught during the Civil Rights Movement. Dr. King had a dream. He dreamed that children would not be judged by the color of their skin, but the content of their character. He protested, organized boycotts, and took action. Looking around this room, where we can see people of different ethnicities, cultures, and backgrounds, we are the product of change. Think of it this way. Dr. King and his allies fought for equality and justice around the world not just for the United States of America. He showed us what it means to be a non-hateful leader who can make effective change. He encouraged people to protest in order to call out hate and make changes, not for him, but alongside him, as equals. 250,000 people were in attendance on the downtown mall and millions watched on television when Martin Luther King Jr. presented his famous I Have a Dream speech. Millions of people wanted to see the impact of this one man. This one man who is creating change. This one man, this one man who is creating change alongside the people he was creating change for. He was creating change for you and I. As one of the most influential world leaders, Dr. King would be proud to see how far we have come. Thank you. a club under my mom's room. With the Rotary Club, I have led school drives where you've given children free backpacks and supplies, and attended the National Convention in, the, in Indianapolis where I helped plan roller activities for you. I am a leader within Young Artists of America, a performing arts program. I am a leader. I recently performed in Winter Wonder Wonderland Alice in Wonderland at the Stratton and have done two other performances as well. I am an honor and I am working on my third. I am also a leader in the Bullis Winter Performance of Percy Jackson and the White and I am excited to do more in the following years. I am a leader to my classmates by giving them support to them when they need it and being an exemplary Bullis student. Thank you. Hello everyone. Today we are here to 
to talk about leaders like Dr. or Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. I believe that we are all the leaders in our community. Just the, most, just the smallest, most unappreciated thing is being the leader. Anything we do is being the leader because it influences the people in the community around us. Now you, the people at Bullis, have a choice to be a bad leader or a great one. Great leaders are people who try and or succeeds to help others and are all oh, nice people. Um, there is no Bullis without leaders because we are all because we all influence the people and community around us. Um, the thing that made it Dr. King such a great leader is because he showed empathy and led by example. And now we at the list can follow in his footsteps. On this Martin Luther King Jr. week, you, you and others should strive to be a leader. And, and if you see something in your way, break the barrier, push through. Keep being you, keep being a great person, and be the best person. Thank you. To some, Martin Luther King Jr. Oh, sorry. For to some, Martin Luther King Jr. Day is just a day off from school or work. To some, MLK Day is, is a day to honor the man who served as a pivotal leader during the Civil Rights Era and used the Monday as a day of service. As an educator, Dr. King serves as a daily reminder and inspiration to lead others in a way that empowers them to become leaders of their own. Teaching students to communicate with respect and listen to understand. Showing my students how to be humble, not taking action for recognition, but doing what's best to keep society moving forward. Knowledge is power. The more one knows, the more power they possess. It is how you use that power that matters most. For good or for bad, both have an impact on society. Dr. King said, we must use time creatively in the knowledge that the time is always right to do right. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you, Mr. Percy. And thank you to all of our amazing presenters from the lower and middle school. At this time, I would like to introduce the upper school segment of our program. We are very privileged to have three individuals explore the upper school theme. We are our ancestors by the streams. During this part, we will hear from three individuals, Sydney Shaw and Carson Talbot from the senior class, and we will also hear from Worthy. At this time, I would like to welcome up Sydney Shaw. Hi guys, I'm Sydney Shaw from the 12th grade, and I'll be reading The Revolution Will Not Be Televised by Jill Heron. You will not be able to stay home, brother. You will not be able to plug in, turn on, and cop out. You will not be able to lose yourself on skag and skip out for beer during commercials, because the revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be brought to you by Xerox in four parts without commercial interruption. The revolution will not show you pictures of Nixon blowing a bugle and leading a charge by John Mitchell, General Abrams, and Spiral Agnew to eat hog moths confiscated from a Harlem sanctuary. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be brought to you by the Schaefer Award Theater and will not star Natalie Woods and Steve McQueen or Bullwinkle and Julia. The revolution will not give your mouth appeal. The revolution will not get rid of the nubs. The revolution will not make you look five pounds thin because the revolution will not be televised them. There will be no pictures of you and Willie Mae pushing that shopping cart down the block on the dead run or trying to slide that color TV into a stolen ambulance. NBC will not be able to predict the winner at 8.32 on report from the 29 districts. The revolution will not be televised. There will be no pictures of shooting down brothers on the Instagram replay. 
There will be no pictures of brothers being shooting down on the instant replay. There will be no pictures of Whitney Young being run out of Harlem with a brand new process. There will be no slow motion or still lives of Roy Wilkins strolling through Watts in a red, black, and green liberation jumpsuit that he had been saving for just the proper occasion. Green Acres, Beverly Hillbillies, and Hooterville Junction will no longer be so damn relevant. And women will not care if Dick finally got down with Jane on Search for Tomorrow because black people will be in the streets searching for a writer today. The revolution will not be televised. There will be no highlights on the 11 o'clock news and no pictures of Harry Arnwood and Liberationists and Jackie Onassis blowing her nose. The theme song will not be written by Jim Webb or Francis Scott Key, nor sung by Glenn Campbell, Tom Jones, Johnny Cash, Engelbert Humberdink, or the, the Rare Earth. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be right back after a message about a white tornado, white lightning, or white people. You will not have to worry about the dove in your bedroom, the tiger in your tank, or the giant in your toilet bowl. The revolution will not go better with coke. The revolution will not fight germs that may cause bad breath. The revolution will put you in the driver's seat. The revolution will not be televised, will not be televised, will not be televised, will not be televised. The revolution will be no Big Run Brothers. The revolution will be live. MLK Day to me is a day of gratitude and reflection. I am grateful that one man in just 39 years of life was able to have such an enormous impact on the world. Fortunately, his dream and message of freedom, equality, and justice and love continue to be carried on after his death. And his legacy has allowed me to have opportunities and experiences of which my ancestors would never have dreamed of, such as living in North Bethesda, attending Bullets where I have friends of different races and backgrounds, and be able to apply to any college I want. When I go to visit my grandparents in Louisville, Kentucky, MLK's impact is more profusely displayed. My grandparents were the first blacks allowed to move into their subdivision in 1967, but only after they filed a lawsuit under a new open housing law, passed as a result of MLK's work. Furthermore, my grandparents have pointed out streets where they couldn't go growing up for the fear of harassment, assault, arrest, or worse. But today, for the most part, we can drive around freely and safely. While the world is still not perfect and there is still much progress to be made, I am grateful to Reverend Dr. King and the positive change resulting from his life work, which has allowed people that look like me to thrive in society. Thank you. Good morning, Bullis. For those who don't know, my name is Miss Worthy, and I am in the social studies department in the upper school. And here are my reflections. By the time I was six years old, I had celebrated Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday several times at my preschool slash elementary school. Every month, we celebrated a freedom fighter that was born in that month. And Dr. King was always January. In addition to celebrating his birthday, we listened to, meditated on, and memorized his I Have a Dream speech. So, when I was six years old, and my parents told me we were going to march to the Lincoln Memorial to honor Dr. King and to make sure his birthday became a national holiday, I was more than ready. Right? That was the day, fun fact, that the brilliant musician Stevie Wonder sang happy birthday to me for the first time. Many do not know that he wrote that song for Dr. Martin Luther King. Although I had celebrated Dr. King before, it wasn't until that day, that snowy day, where I wrote on my father's shoulders that I learned from watching my mother cry and my father cry and my uncles cry, just how significant this human being was. Since that day, I've spent years truly getting to know this remarkable man known as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Dr. King agitated our political systems non-violently 
and fervently spoke out against racism and segregation, ultimately achieving the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. But did you know that right before he was assassinated, he was about to start a poor people's movement. He announced it at the Southern Christian Leadership Conference staff meeting in November of 1967. He was assassinated in April of 1968. This campaign was going to address economic inequalities with nonviolent direct action. His vision was that the campaign would be the most sustainable, massive, and widespread, widespread effort of civil disobedience undertaken by any social movement in the United States history. Unfortunately, the mere thought of addressing systemic economic inequalities experienced by poor people clashed too much with the values of people who wanted to maintain subjugation, racism, and terrorism. Dr. King was never allowed to fully execute his campaign for poor people. While I'm grateful that his birthday became a national holiday to remember him, Martin Luther King Day of Service tends to promote a cursory glance of his work. I encourage everyone in this room to thoroughly examine all of his life's work. He made no excuses for any form of hate, and he challenged hate in all aspects of our society. Let's all do the same. Dr. King has encouraged us to support policies that reflect higher consciousness, and his life's, life's work left us a blueprint to serve in ways that will disrupt unjust systems, unjust thinking with non-violent strategies. He once said, everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and your verb agree to serve. You don't even have to know the second theory of thermodynamics to serve. You only need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. So as we celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his nationally recognized day of service, we need to ask ourselves, how can I serve in an impactful way that will eradicate poverty, homelessness, oppression, racism, xenophobia, homophobia, and all the forms of violence, just as Dr. King did. How can you make Dr. King's aspirations a reality for all? Thank you so much, Ms. Worthy, and thank you all for your contributions to today's MLK Assembly. I am Ariel Asari, co-president of the BSU, and I want to thank you all for being here today. It is an extremely special celebration and one of the um, few all-school assemblies we've been able to have since pre-COVID. We really appreciate you taking your time and dedication to be here and pay attention. Let's give everyone another round of applause for their individual. But before we go, I would like us to take a moment and reflect on Dr. King's legacy. I'm hoping that you all see that Dr. King's legacy continues within us and that there's still more to be done. Dr. King fought for equality for all and believed that we must learn to live together as brothers or perish together as fools. In short, he is saying that no community can survive being divided into opposing groups. So let's be mindful that each person plays a role in reaching the dream that he had for each one of us in our country. My name is Blake Bryan, co-president of the BSU, 
And with that being said, we will now hear from our upper school choir, who will be singing We Shall Not Be Me. remains even more prevalent now as it was then. So let's not forget that equal justice for all has still not been fully crystallized because hate, divisiveness, and discriminatory acts still plague our nation. So I encourage you all, as you transition from today's assembly, to think about what you're doing or what you can do to remediate oppressive behavior 
divisive in your respective communities. Again, I thank you all for making today a special one. Now, we miss, but then I personally thank all who made this possible from the DEI leadership team, from facilities, from technology, from choir, from jazz, from our division leaders. We thank you all for making today possible. Give a round of applause, please. So we have the jazz band that's what it closes out. However, we are good on time. Is that a beautiful thing or what? So let's listen for a few moments to jazz band. Middle school, you are transitioning to the snack, right? And upper school, you're doing the same as well, to my understanding. So let's sit still for a moment, hear the jazz band, and follow your educators. Again, give everyone a round of applause. The name is great.